What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Got a lot of people already in the room. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for the thumbs up. We got a big show. We're talking to Ham Radio 2.0 tonight about digital radio. So make sure you get out your DMRs, your Yaesu System Fusions, your wires, and maybe a little D-Star. We'll know a little bit about that, but not our forte. But hey, we'll definitely pretend like we're experts, right? <laughs> Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed your Friday. I had a very uh, busy week, so I'm glad to kick it off with you guys. All right, let's flip her over here. So what is up, everybody? It is I, Josh, KI6NAZ, and we're back again with the Ham Radio Crash Course. Our purpose here on the Ham Radio Crash Course is to create an inclusive environment, and that's APRS going off, uh, and where we bring amateur radio information out to hopefully give you a bit of inspiration uh, to go out and try it yourself. So that's kind of the, the reason for why we do the live streams. It's a bit of a fun way to experiment with stuff, uh, demonstrate some stuff, and provide some information. So hopefully you think about joining us, get the subscribe button would be great, or hit us up on Facebook or Discord. The links are in the description. We possibly have some admins out there that'll throw a link to our Discord. Discord is where we do our after chat. Our after chat is a live voice chat and text chat, your choice, you can do either one. And we will take questions, have a good fun time. It's not all amateur radio, trust me, it's a lot of fun, it's crazy time. So if you're interested in that, go check that out. Also, tonight, we have a giveaway. We're giving away a quirky QRP Slink Tenna. So if you're interested in a giveaway, you got to join the Discord and go to the giveaway chat and click the little horn. Uh, hopefully we'll have some admins in a little bit and they'll maybe give you a link directly to it. So we got some news items, uh, just a couple of stuff. PG&E shuts off power to many northern California counties. Many's a, a the wrong term. A good number of Northern California counties. Now, I am not in Northern California. I thank everybody who sent me a message saying, I hope you're okay. I hope you saw power. I'm in Southern California. Southern California to Northern California is a good six, seven, eight hours, depending on how you drive. So I was fine. Who was not fine was Bob, K6UDA. He was living out of his motorhome for a couple of days um, off of the power that he had there. And he reported that amateur radio was alive and well. Simplex was booming. He was on the local repeaters and AT&T was the only carrier that had cell coverage and where it had coverage it was kind of spotty in his area so good to know uh, we are doing a giveaway for the Shegu G90 QRP radio that is still going on uh, there should be a card that you can click on and it'll take you to it and that is once I hit 73,000 subscriber I'm sorry yeah 73,000 I just hit 69,000 before starting this stream so we are pretty close i'm guessing the exact time we're going on the backpack trip next month this same time next month is when we're going to give it away so it should be a lot of fun uh, that's going to be very cool and we have a ton of people i am surprised who are going on the soda um, backpacking trip we have people flying in from out of state that are going to be joining us which is just awesome it's going to be a lot of fun so i'm definitely into that thanks everybody for that and and thinking about joining us and so let's see next weekend because of the soda hike i will be doing a live stream on going over my gear and explaining what i'm bringing it is a dry hike so water is going to be very important we're going to carry a lot of water in we're going to drink all of it and we're going to come back home okay so that's pretty much my opening thanks for following me on the news there oh and my I just lost all my show notes, just like that. So hold on one second while I get those back up. Well, today, like I mentioned, we have Jason from Ham Radio 2.0. I forgot to get his description or in the description, but I'll add that to the notes. Sorry about that, Jason. Um, anyway, if you look for Ham Radio 2.0 on YouTube, you'll find him. He's right there. Please subscribe. You probably know a little bit about him, knows a lot about all kinds of radios, but we're talking today about digital voice radios. So I've got my show notes back up. Very good. Why don't I flip things over and say hello to Jason? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> we'll take Skype a second to catch up. Let's see how it goes. Jason, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do you well, – How there he is. How's it going, there it Jason? There it is. <laughs> yeah, Skype's uh, – there's a delay there. That's, that's okay. Logic44 says, yeah. what do you think about using a Faraday cage box for anti-EMP measures to store HTs? Do you do that, Jason? No. <laughs> That's, I, I think you've got too much money. 
So I I, <laughs> I did a uh, I did a live stream where I got an EMP bag. It's over there somewhere. It's called. It's uh, advertised as an EMP bag, and I put a radio in it, an HT. I keyed up an HT next to it, and I was able to talk to it. So I don't know if it's effective. Yeah, um, yeah, I, that, yeah. I would be okay. concerned that it's not working. So right, <laughs> it's actually really easy to make an EMP cage. I know this is not the topic of the show, but it's really easy. Sorry. You get one of those galvanized metal trash cans with a metal lid, line it mm -hmm. with cardboard, an insulator, put your equipment in there, put the lid on top, and then use an aluminum tape around the seal. Bang, there is your Faraday cage. There you go. That easy. So, yes, very good. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. So, Jason, what have you been up to? Oh, man, I've had a busy month. Uh, I appreciate you, you letting me come on the show, Josh. Um, I know we've talked about doing this for a while. Yep. And uh, and our, our YouTubers Bunch show that we did, is that about a month ago? Yeah. Um, that was really that was really fun. I got a lot of really good feedback on that on, on my channel, and uh, we'll have the next uh, episode. We're going to make that a regular thing, so we'll have the next episode posting on my channel next week. Um, but in the last month, I've traveled to um, Detroit, and I recorded the Tapper Digital Communications Conference as I did last year. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Las Vegas the week before that and, uh, for a YouTuber's thing. And um, and then last weekend, right here in, in uh, North Texas, there was a microwave update conference, similar to Tapper, but everything above like 900 megahertz. Uh, that was fun. Uh, one guy did a presentation where they two guys got on. T they they were in I think they were in California. No, they were in uh, Arizona, and uh, they took all this equipment up on top of a mountain, and you're you're on the mountain, and you're looking across the valley to another guy on the on a, a mountain over there. And they're doing a, uh, a, a single sideband phone QSO on 47 gigahertz. Okay. So I thought that was that was pretty sweet. That is cool. Um, yeah, they they did some CW also, but so I recorded all that, and uh, that's going to be upcoming on on my channel as well. Um, Very good. Pretty soon, but uh, lots of cool new stuff like that. We'll be traveling to Costa Rica next month. Um, no, two weeks from now, this month. Mm -hmm. and uh, going back for de-expedition, so got some more upcoming on that as well. So fun times, a bunch of, bunch of traveling everywhere, doing all kinds of stuff. Very good. I loved doing the YouTube bunch. Uh, this last one in particular was very spicy. The, there <laughs> yeah. was a very spicy conversation. That is going to be very cool. Yeah. I think that's going to be a yeah, lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's good timing right now with everything else oh that's, my that's gosh. happening. Too. It was almost the catalyst for what's going on. Right. Well, one part of it yeah. was like, Oh man, we're going there. Um, before we get into the questions, you know what we all like to ask is, uh, what do you what are you drinking? I know you're another beer aficionado, so what do you pull out of the fridge? Today I have uh, Great Notions, Sticky yep. Bun. You, oh, I've heard I've heard about this, and you've got the same. Now that I got you keyed with your green screen, half of that's transparent. So half per, of you're, half of it's you're, gone, huh? you're you're perfect for the stream. That's everything <laughs> needs to be transparent. Um, so these come these are made in these are actually from Oregon. And, uh, yeah, Portland, Oregon. And uh, Chris Drummond, anybody who uses Buddy Pole, Chris Drummond, who owns the Buddy Pole company, yeah. his father, Bud Drummond, started Buddy Pole. He and I trade craft beer all the time. He sent me these. So, so I have, uh, you know, the brewery, right, in Southern California, the brewery? No, B I don't guess so. B-R-U-E-R-Y. Okay. Um, they have a beer called Black Tuesday. Have you ever heard of it? No, but I'm interested. <laughs> okay. Well, it's coming out, and it's uh, it's the first year they're doing cans. So it's always it's only been in bottles, and the bottles oh, is about thirty dollars okay. a bottle. But cans, I'm thinking wow. about picking up some cans. Anyway, I've got the uh, Spaceways, and if I anyway if I get some cans, I'll I'll try and fire one off your way. I'm oh, sweet. Try open okay, this. Yeah. So modern yeah, times Spaceways. It's an IPA. Okay. I've got a couple of. Uh... Yeah, I've got a couple of, of uh, flavors out here that I want to send to you as well after we talked last time. Somebody in the chat said, BRB, driving to Buddy Pole, LOL. Chris C. <laughs> said that. <laughs> so, again, so. I got the Ham Radio Crash Course mug with the Sweet. custom insignia on there. Thanks again for... Mm. Yeah, so it's Oktoberfest. What is that? Um, Al now Alviderson, Grol uh, Grolsch? Grolsch? What's the... Um... 
Uh, I don't know. Anyway, let's get back on topic. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about digital modes. Um, I brought Jason out here. You've probably seen a lot of his videos on digital modes. He covers a lot of things. And it's not just at the cursory level. It goes down into some pretty good detail with all the different things he's covered. So a bit different, though, today. Uh, yeah, a bit different than what we're doing today. We're going to try and start high and then work our way down as we get some questions from you, by the way. We will have call-ins, so if we don't hit what you want to talk about, we'll have the call-in so you can call in and post questions. I will try and capture them as we go, as Jason's kind of talking a little bit, and then we'll work through them. So I would say, let's let's start with the the biggest one. In a nutshell, what is an explanation of what digital modes are? Um, I've tried to explain DMR in the past. I think I did an okay job at it, but they're not all the same. And and how would you kind of quantify them? Well, as far as the definition of what they are, they, they kind of are all the same. They're just digital. They're just your voice over usually UHF repeaters. Mm -hmm. uh, not always, though. Um, in a digital format. Right. I mean, so, you know, it's kind of like the difference between AM and FM. It's still phone transmissions. Right. It's still, it's still you know, I'm talking into the mic and hearing you when you talk into the mic, that kind of thing. So it's just a different type of transmission. It's narrow band, of course. Um, uh, narrower than voice, right? Correct. Um, yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it's narrow. It's narrower. I can't say that word. Narrower. It's it's more narrow than narrow band actually, because it's it's right. half of narrow narrow band. So. So what are the benefits? to using a digital mode? Because everybody's kind of dipping their toe into that world. What would you say the right. benefits are going right. that way? Well, it's it's easy. A lot of it a lot of it has to do with band allocation. Because mm -hmm. it is narrow band, it requires less bandwidth. So sure. you can get more um, you can get more and this is true with fusion uh, as well as DMR. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get more repeaters on the on the band because mm -hmm. you only need a, a twelve and a half kilohertz segment instead of a 25 kilohertz segment so that's one advantage um sure. the other advantage is that when uh when the guys in texas uh the first dmr repeater in texas was in dallas which is just a few miles from me and uh when they put up that first repeater it was on one of the tallest buildings in downtown dallas mm -hmm. and there are there's almost one of every kind of repeater on that same building there's two meter 220 440 900 uh, I think there's an ATV repeater on it. There, at one point in time, there was a six meter FM repeater on it. So they've got all kinds of stuff down there. Um, they did some preliminary testing to test, uh, got in their in their vehicle and drove around and uh, talking on a on a 40 to 50 watt mobile radio back into the repeater and and at the uh, at the tower, mm -hmm. and they were able to get about 20 to 25 percent further away from the tower and still get into the repeater. Uh, 20 25 percent further than they were with the two meter 440 220 analog repeaters that are on that same building so okay. the distance of if you've never done dmr simplex in a vehicle uh, with a full power i'm not talking about an ht i'm talking about full power radio with an external antenna the way the, a regular mobile station mm -hmm. you know like you would 146.52 or something um you'd be surprised uh how far it will go um not only because it because you don't have a lot of snap, crackle, pop with the static in it, mm -hmm. uh, but also just because it punches out a little bit farther. So um, it's really fun to try and do something like that. So I've, I've heard this, and I've never experimented with this, but it sounds like you may have a lot more information in this. Uh, with digital modes, it maintains kind of a high transmit rate until a certain point, and then it kind of drops off quickly. Yeah, versus that's FM correct. kind of has a fading effect. That's right. Is that just because the radios are better at picking up the signal into a certain noise level before it just drops? Is that kind no, of how it works? It's because it's that's because it's uh, ones and zeros. It's 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 oh. either off or on. Oh, that makes it's sense. So there's there's no complexities it. in human voice. It's just the digital no. representation of it. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. the narrow size of it being half narrow band. I'm assuming mm -hmm. that's what allows them to do the split uh, capability on like DMR repeaters. Right. Is that what allows you to have two active transmit receives concurrently kind of thing? That's correct. Yeah. You're talking about time slots. And yes, right. yes. Each time slot, time slot one, time slot two is 6.25 kilohertz. So when you put them both together, that makes up for the 12 and a half kilohertz uh, narrow band compliant uh, repeater system. Fusion does exactly the same thing, except that they take one of their, they don't call them time slots, but they take one of their 6.25 kilohertz segments mm -hmm. and they, they transmit GPS 
information over it, okay. which you can actually do on DMR. DMR has that capability. We have just chosen to use that second time slot for another voice segment, which is why it's time division multiple access because it's it's keying up and down at the same time on on the on the same frequency. So, but Fusion's basically splitting that twelve and a half kilohertz into two six point two five kilohertz segments and putting your voice on one and putting your GPS transmission information on the other. Okay, that's a really good clarification. I didn't know that. So uh, mm. you said time division. What is it? Multiple access. So TDMA. Yeah, TDMA. It's old which, cell phone technology. Which yeah, that's where people might remember mm. that from. Yeah. Old cell phone technology repurposed for amateur radio or commercial radio, which then commercial got repurposed radio, again right. into amateur radio. Right, but I right. didn't know that. So most DMR repeaters are using both time slots for voice versus Yaesu System Fusion. That's where they do all the extra stuff, not just GPS, but probably the images too. Is that where the images come from when you can send you know an what? image? That's a good question. I'm not sure on the image part. I know that when you switch your uh, – because if you're in DN mode on your Fusion radio, that's, that's for digital narrow. If right. you switch to VW, mm -hmm. that's for voice wide. Right. So it so – it, it turns off the GPS segment and it uses that 12 and a half kilohertz all for your voice. That's why a lot of people say it sounds better um, on voice. And it, and it does, I've done some simplex, uh, some fusion simplex on voice wide and it does sound quite, quite good. Um, I'm, I believe, I, I, I don't know if this is right or not, but I think that voice wide is not supported in wires X. So if you want to connect your repeater to wires X, you can't do voice wide. Mm hmm um, but, uh, but if, but you can, ch you can put your fusion standalone repeater in voice wide or do simplex of course. But yes, I mean, that's just, that, that's exactly what you're saying is correct. Okay. Um, all right. So that was, let's see, I already learned something right there. And so, uh, <laughs> wide voice is using both those channels. Does it sound digitized? Like you sometimes get when you're using just the standard time slot? It does. Um, it can um, because, you know, uh, that's commonly referred to as an R2-D2 effect. Yeah. Um, yes, it can. It's usually obstacles obstacles between you and the other station you're talking to if you're on simplex or just you and the repeater. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it can. Yeah, there's still propagation that has to take place and line of sight that has to take place in order to make a good transmission. That's true on Fusion. That's true on D-Star. It's true on every, It's true on analog, of course. But, uh, right. yeah, yeah, you still get that sometimes. So you, you kind of already mentioned it. People use uh, digital modes for simplex, right? Just picking up radio to radio. You mentioned full power. So I mean, I think you mean mobile mobile radios, right? With a fixed antenna, something like that. 50 watts capable. Yeah. In other words, not an HT. Not an HT. Um, so that leads me to believe that you could, if, if one was so inclined, use these digital modes without the internet. Is that a possibility? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a question I get all the time. They're yes. like, "Well, what if the internet goes down? Then you're," and I'm like, "No, that doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with anything." Uh, DMR simplex, Fusion simplex, D star. I, I assume D star. I've never done D star simplex, but I assume it works the same way. Um, does not rely on the internet. Um, your DMR and Fusion repeater do not rely on the internet. They do. They rely on the internet to interconnect to one another over wide areas over the internet. Right. But every DMR repeater and every Fusion repeater, in fact, a lot of the Fusion repeaters where I'm at, are standalone repeaters that aren't even connected to the internet. So right. it's no different than I tell people it's no different than an Echolink or an All Star repeater. Per, I was just going to say that. So yeah. Yeah. all they're doing, um, if you guys remember when we did the re uh, interview with Hayden. Um, ham radio H, uh, ham radio dx on youtube mm. he was saying that there's many repeaters that are interlinked there's still rf repeaters right everything's mm. rf but right. then they they interlink via the internet so the work if, if the power goes down and your repeater is solar powered for for instance it should work um you won't have that internet connectivity but it should work right Correct. Yeah, okay. that's um. You know, and a lot of people will say, yeah, I, I, you're familiar. I, I assume Josh, you're familiar with the Peanut app. Mm hmm. Okay. So, the difference between, like, say, an R Finder device, which I don't have one here with me. I carried an R Finder device for about a year and a half. That's the um, UHF phone. That's the UHF, the, and the full Android device with a two-way radio built into it. Right. So the difference between my regular Android phone with running Peanut mm -hmm. and the actual R Finder device is that if I if I go up if I go hiking in the mountain, if I go on a soda expedition, mm -hmm. and I'm up in the mountain, and I complete, and of course there's no Wi-Fi on top of a mountain. Right. If I completely lose cell service, then I can switch my R Finder device or a DMR Fusion radio, a two-way radio, and I can key up and I can talk to you or whoever else is listening to me. If I lose Wi-Fi and 4G on this device here, I can't talk on the Peanut app. 
because there's no RF coming out of the peanut app. Right. So there's actually RF coming out of a regular DMR, regular fusion radio, or an R finder device or something like that, where it's just regular radio the same way it does, um, the same way your Kenwood D74 would be uh, if you're using it on analog anyway. So. Mm-hmm. So that I get the same questions all the time. This is yeah. a is a BS thing because it's it requires the internet. So yeah. I also get this question, which I'm going to ask you: Are these digital modes? Are these real radio? Yeah, as much as anything else is, because okay. it produces RF. Right. So the radio mm-hmm. makes the RF. It it doesn't matter what you put into it, basically, as long right. as you can decode it on the back end. I guess right. Right. Yeah. Or demodulate, yeah. decode, whatever you want to call it. It's de- yeah, it's 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 a it's a vocoder, so it is decoding it, but it's right. not encrypted. Correct. So you can you can encrypt it. You can encrypt DMR because it's a commercial standard. Right. Um, not supposed to on amateur radio. Just make that clear. Yeah. But yeah Don't get yourself in trouble for something right, we said. Yeah, guys. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so very good. Yeah, I get that question all the so, time, and it's always a uh, it's like, well, yeah. I mean, sure. Why not? It. You know. Yeah. I guess that goes to the, is FT8 real radio you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah yeah so i i've uh i have three different dmr radios that i've programmed um and i find that i think most people find that the most difficult aspect of dmr uh, mm-hmm. maybe not mm-hmm. so much with the ac system mm-hmm. fusion d star wires could be complicated depending on how you have it rigged up but can't be are, are all the applications pretty much the same um as far as their function in how you use them to, to build up your code plug and the code plugs, the, the programming, right? Yeah. So, okay. They're, they're all pretty much the same. They look differently, but the, the terms in them, most of them are the same. Mm-hmm. Um, people, the, the word code plug scares people. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. It's that's an old Motorola term because they used to have a physical plug that you would plug into the side of a part 90 radio that would open up the programming so that when you had the art, uh, part 90, you had the plug out the part 90 radio in the fire engine or the police car or whatever, they're punching buttons on it. They can't right. program it. So, right. so it's an old Motorola term. I believe, I believe it's a Motorola term. Um, I tell people a code plug is just a computer file. I I, right. I give a DMR presentation every year at Hamcom and a couple other places around here, and I say and I has I say okay, show of hands, who has ever used RT systems or Chirp? And usually about two thirds of the room, <laughs> if not more, raises your hand. Yeah. Well, when you save, when you open up Chirp and you program in all your repeaters into Chirp, and then you click File Save As and you save it to your hard drive somewhere, that file on your hard drive is a code plug. That's Good all point. a code plug is. Yep. It's Good a point. it's it's a piece of it's a file mm-hmm. that is used through software to program information into your radio. That's all it is. Right. So a code plug is nothing. And I can, if I can program my code plug for my AnyTone D8878 here, mm-hmm. I can program, I can put 100 channels in here in my code plug and save it on my computer. Then I can email it to you, Josh, and you can put that same exact code plug into your radio. Right. So it's just, it's not complicated. It's just a, it's just a computer file. Uh, there's a question that came in the chat, and I think it's one we should probably hit because we, we're going a little hard into the DMR, and I think that might be because it's more complex to get up and running. Right. I, I think people spend more time talking about DMR, one, because there's usually more repeaters available, but there's more effort from the ham, I think, to get it going. But uh, it was asked in the chat, what is the difference between reflectors and talk groups? Um, I know what talk groups are. Nothing. I mean, nothing. You know, I tell people that D-Star uses reflectors, t- uh, mm-hmm. DMR uses talk groups, and WireZX uses rooms. They're all basically the same thing. There are there there's a there's a DMR network out there called DMR DMR Plus that's widely used um, in Europe, and uh, they use reflectors instead of talk groups. It's something about the way the traffic is is routed, internet routed or network routed, packet routed. Mm-hmm. Uh, over the internet i don't understand all that on the back end but essentially they're they are the same thing okay guapo thank you for the uh dancing uh pair there i appreciate that (laughs) thank you so um is to to leverage that a bit so talk groups and reflectors are pretty similar is that why yesu system fusion and dmr radios have sort of an interoperability when it comes to like using a hotspot uh no no, no it doesn't nothing have to, to do with that no okay. no not specifically no the the reason they're they're so compatible is because they're basically the same thing they both you they both use an ambi plus two codec which is a vocoder um to uh decode and encode your 
uh, analog voice into digital and back again. Mm-hmm. Um, D Star uses an AMBE A M B E codec, and because D Star is older than every than Fusion and, and DMR, so right. Um, it just it was the latest and greatest when D Star came out, but then uh, later on when DMR and, and Fusion came out, uh, DMR came out first. Fusion came out not too long after that, at least for amateur radio, and um, they're very compatible because they use the same type of, of vocoder, so it's it's easy to kind of translate them back and forth. And is that the uh, the C four FM? Is that where that comes in to play? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's part of, that's part of it. Yes. Okay. So going back to programming a bit, um, everybody has their own special way to program a DMR radio, or I, I think they probably have similarities. Would, is there a particular flow that you use for creating them? Is there something you recommend to first timers if they were going to try and code up one by scratch? I've actually been asked that a lot. I'm probably going to be doing some videos on that upcoming, but um, I think people would like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What I would do is I would take it and I would put um, I would put all of the talk groups in it that you ever that you think you might ever want to use. Mm-hmm. Um, start at one, which one being worldwide, two being local, three being North America, and just go through as many as you can. Put all the statewide talk groups in there. There's 51 statewide talk groups in the USA because Washington, D.C. has the 51st. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of regional talk groups. There's a, there's a lot of a lot of states have multiple, more than one talk groups. Um, so I would say go put it put in all the talk groups that you can possibly think of that you think you might need one day. And then once that's all done, then start putting your repeaters in. Um, you can start with your hotspot, figure out what frequency you want to run your hotspot on, um, add a channel for every uh, talk group you want to to do on your hotspot, and then start adding repeaters. And um, you know you have to change frequency, offset, and uh, and color code depending on what the repeater is programmed with. But yeah, that's that's how. And then but then you've got all your talk groups in there. And when you go in and you say, oh, I want that repeater and then this talk group, that talk group's already programmed into the code plug because you put that in first. Right. Um, okay, so with regards to programming, uh, down here we have something called the PAPA system. And yeah. the PAPA system has a fairly robust code plug library. So all the files that you can download for all kinds of different repeater or different radios like the Anytones and, and whatnot. Right. Um, is that kind of the way you f- stumble on and find code plugs for somebody that's kind of starting out? I know how I started was I went and found a code plug for the local mm-hmm. repeaters by me. I loaded that, and that's kind of what I used. I asked because the code plugs that these people cook up are complex. They are yeah. huge. They've got mm-hmm. all these private calls in there and all kinds of other stuff, um, different re- or zones, right? Zones are different geographic areas or can be. Um, can be. Is that kind of how how you'd go? Pro, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it. Those are probably code plugs that were that started out small and have been added to over time. Um, but yes, yes, that's uh, that that's how, that's where I would go for that. We actually have a we have a website in Texas called DMRTexas.net, mm-hmm. um, and on that website um, we have a place for code plugs. Some of them are getting kind of dated and we're, we're making an effort to try to update that. But also there's, there's a drop down menu at the top and we have a, we, we started a national code plug database. Oh. Um, and basically what it is, is just a listing of the 50 States and like California, you know, we might have links to two or three different websites where someone in California hosts code plugs to share for that for different areas of california but it's all in one page separated by state alphabetically on our national code plugs database we don't have every state up there yet it's a growing process Mm -hmm. Uh, but every time i get on every time i do a live stream of my own or i I do a new episode i say hey you know if 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 you go to dmrtexas.net and you drill down you go to the national code plugs uh, page and you see something there for your state that we don't have let us know and we will add it so we're trying to get a repository to where somebody can go there and then be redirected anywhere they want to go just kind of for nationwide so what was the website again just so i can make a note of it and get it in the description sure yeah it's dmrtexas.net great okay perfect i'll keep that in mind i'll add that to the description too so um People are asking, hey, this is supposed to be a, a beginner stream. Um, I, I would say, so to be honest with you, we're, we're hitting you with a lot of terms, and you could probably, you may have to roll this back a bit to, to decode some of this. But believe it or not, this is kind of at the beginner level. You're, you're going to need a radio 
you, you've got one or you go buy one DMR, you're going to need to program it with something, right? You're, you're going to need to get a code plug or you're going to have to sit down and manually do it. I don't necessarily think that may be the place to start. There right. are other ways to go. Are, are there, is there, um, well, I, this is kind of in the blind. Um, is there any way you know of to generate a code plug other than just sitting down and hacking through it or loading one that already exists? Is there like an easier way? There are some websites out there. I don't know them off the top of my head where you can go and say, I want a code plug for um, this radio. Mm -hmm. I think I think hamdigital.nl or something like that is one of them. I can't remember exactly. I've never used any of those, but I have seen them. Um, but yeah, you can go have, you can go, uh, some websites have an auto generated code plug, uh, machine on them where you can go in there and tell it what you want and click on, and it'll give you, I don't think they're very complex, mm -hmm. but it'll at least give you a baseline to start. And then you can go and you can kind of look the, the way I learned how to build code plugs is, um, my first radio was a DMR radio and a, and a local ham here programmed it for me. And I brought it home, plugged it in my computer, read the code plug that he had put in it. And I'm like, and I started reading through it. I'm like, Oh, I understand what they're doing here now. So, and that's kind of how I learned how to do it. The first way I did it was just literally smashing my face into the keyboard um, until it worked on one repeater. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't really have a code plug. I just had this radio. It was a fairly non standard kind of new radio, and there was no code plugs for it. So I'm like, well, yeah. okay. I guess I'm. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just going with it. So yeah, yeah. That's um, the problem. That's that's a problem because there's so many different DMR radios out there. Right. So. Repeaters are great. Uh, you know, if you have a local repeater, there there can be some issues with that. So maybe you can clarify some of this and as we go to the next question. Oh, um, the when you have a local repeater, and again, we're talking time slots. I'm kind of hitting you blind again. Sorry about that because I'm, I'm okay. thinking of all these things as we're going. Sure. Um, when you're talking on those two time slots and <laughs> you're talking on some wild talk group, most mm -hmm. repeaters don't necessarily allow this, right? They're usually kind of throttled to a certain talk group set. Mm, depends. Depends. Yeah. You're generally hogging it for everybody that's not receiving that talk group, right? Yes. Okay. So when you're transmitting on, you know, Josh's ham radio crash course talk group through a local repeater, you're blocking that out. Other people can't work on that time slot at the same time you are on an unrelated talk group. Correct. Yeah, because each time slot can only be used by one talk group at a time. It doesn't matter what the talk group is. That's correct. Now, a lot of these radios, like like the new Anytone, have what's called a monitor mode or promiscuous mode where they can hear everything on the time slot. And front panel programming is becoming easier and easier with yeah. each new radio we see come out. So it's not impossible that someone would hear you talking on a repeater on the HRCC talk group, which I don't remember the number of that, but they could listen and they could see what that talk group was since mm -hmm. they don't have it programmed. And then they could quickly go into their code plug and program it and join you in the conversation. So since you have a talk group that's connected over Brandmeister and it's available in multiple places, it would, it's not like you're excluding those people if they don't have, you know, they can just easily program it up and join the conversation just like anybody else can. Right. Okay, so that's a good clarification. So I, I, uh, I've never really used the promiscuous mode. I always uh, saw I that checkbox, and I was like, man, I don't want to give my, my radio a disease. <laughs> Right. Really bad. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, that's. I believe that's an old. Uh, ne that's a networking term, actually. Yeah, yeah it is. But yeah, but yeah. you know, you got to make the joke. Come on. Yeah, oh yeah. Of course. <laughs> so, I heard it all the time. Hot spots for for those of you that uh, that don't have repeaters in the in your area, or maybe you just don't like the community on there. I don't know. But there are hot spots, right? And there yeah. are so many hot spots out there. Um, what do you do when you you've probably looked at most of them? I don't know that there's one that has existed that you haven't got your hands on at this point. Uh, is there a certain way you go about it, setting them up, programming them? Is there kind of an art and science to that that people should know? Uh, I guess you know there. It's easier to set up a hotspot than it is to program a code plug. Oh, I love you said that. I love so, that you said yeah, that. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. I mean, there's not, there's really not much to the the whole, the whole hotspot uh, thing. There, there's basically in the in the, in the truest sense of the of the of the description, there's basically only three kinds of hotspots out there. Mm -hmm. There's a million different different hotspots out there, but they all are. There's one of they're one of three, and most of them are Pi Star. Pi Star is one. Right. Most most of your hotspots out there, Pi Star. There's the open spot, which they have their own 
proprietary OS. Mm -hmm. And then there's like the, the, um, the blue DV, the ones that use the blue DV, usually those USB sticks, like, um, I've got one around here somewhere. I don't see it right now. So, uh, Northwest digital makes one zoom spot makes one. Um, but there's, uh, there's an app called blue DV that'll run on Android or windows or iOS that you plug in a USB stick and you open up blue DV and you program it to connect to whatever reflector or, um, wires x room or, or, or talk group you want to right um uh, so it's got to be one of those three i've never seen one that's not one of those three there's okay there may be something out there um but yeah there's uh the, it, most of your hot spots that are out there today are running pi star uh do you have a well, just to throw this on there do you have a preference since you've you've worked with so many hot spots like what do you what are you using right now for a hot spot i am using the the one that i i wish i gosh, i meant to bring it out here and i didn't um, I am unprepared as far as hardware to show in the stream. Time. I'm a little so, unprepared too, guys. I, I think so, I, I thought Jason was just going to come in and carry this thing for me, and so I got yeah, 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 get totally. a Friday where I could just cruise. Yeah, totally. And he thought the yeah. same thing. So we're right. thanks for sticking through it with us. <laughs> uh, the one that I use most of the time right now is the DX Mini. Um, okay. The DXMini.com. Uh, those are assembled by a guy whose name is also Jason. He's here in North Texas. He lives in McKinney, mm -hmm. and uh, he makes uh, he makes the it's they're, they're they've got metal cases on them. They got screens, and uh, a couple of them have touch screens. And he's got one that's a dual time slot, and one that's a single time slot. Um, so that's my current. That's the current one that I I go to. The uh, Robert Bretzman from the TGIF group. He makes one with a Nexion touch screen on it. That's yes. really nice. Um, that. It was probably the latest one I reviewed. I really like that one. Um, uh, the open spot. The open spot is like easy to set up, and once you set it up, you're done. Right. I mean, it's it's the most foolproof one, I think. Um, nothing wrong with Pi Star, but it's a little bit. You got to have a little bit of Linux knowledge to get Pi Star to work. Um, is that just because of the Raspberry Pi interface? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all they all run on Raspbian. Right. Um, so uh, the open spot is all web based. You, um, which the Pi Star's web, you can do all programming through a web page on Pi Star also. But you can also SSH into a Pi Star and and do command line with it. But um, the open spot, it's just I've just I just found you know I'll plug in my open spot and I'll program it to up to a Wires X room like Bob's YouTuber's room, mm -hmm. and I'll leave it. And two three weeks later, I look and I pull up the web page again. I'm like, oh, it's still there and running. So. Um, those are more expensive than most of them, but they're easier to set up. But okay. so most of the time I'm using the open spot or, or the DX mini. Uh, so you're exchanging, easy. you're exchanging money for time is what you're doing. Yeah. A lot of times that's how it works in amateur radio. I don't know if you guys didn't know that, but that's kind of how it works. So <laughs> I, I didn't realize that. So the Pi star is really the only one that's uh raspian based or raspberry Pi based or the rest not. Um, I guess probably on the back end they are, but I'm not aware of a way to SSH connect and command line control the other ones. Interesting. Yeah, because you end so, up doing that a lot. It, it, yeah. when, particularly when you're starting out, if things go off the rails, which they like immediately do for some reason when you're trying to program a Pi Star, like trying to set up Wi-Fi is seems to be a difficult thing. Did you, have you experienced yeah. that before? Really hard, yes. right? Yeah. And and you end up like, well, I guess I'm SSHing. I'm going in. And and mm -hmm. that's always what I end up having to like. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it's always crazy. And they're the they're the Raspberry Minis, so they don't have the Ethernet jack. Because if it had an Ethernet jack, you just jack it in there and you're you're good. But you got to play this whole Wi-Fi juggling game. Very true. Yeah. And if you and what I one thing I've noticed is you know I'll get Wi-Fi set on one one time, mm -hmm. and then if if I travel away from home, I'll take a DX Mini with me and I'll I'll get I'll take it to where I'm going. I was like, okay, I got Wi-Fi programmed on it. Cool. Mm -hmm. So and and it's working, no problem. And then I'll leave and go back home, and then I'll go back to that same spot a month later, and it mm -hmm. won't connect to the Wi-Fi there. And I'm like, I don't, I don't get that. So, and that's not specific. Yeah, I don't, to the, I don't know what the deal is. That's some kind of yeah. priority thing, or is it the I, IP lease got taken by something else? Is that the deal? It could be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I think, and I've I've seen that in all Pi Star hotspots. It's a little bit. It's just a little bit quirky, like you said. So right. I don't know. So. Real quick, just for everybody in the chat, uh, the giveaway, you've got 10 minutes, basically, if you want to get in on that, um, the Slink Tenna giveaway by QuirkyQRP. So if you still want to get in on that, 
you got to go to the Discord. The link is in the description, or hopefully an admin will post for me really quick. And um, join, go into the giveaway chat room, go to the bottom, and click the little party horn where you see 200, 300 something, uh, something clicks. And that'll get you into the giveaway, which is again in 10 minutes. So, all right. So I was, uh, I guess, the last time DMR really made it into the news was the TAC 310 thing. Mm. What Can you explain that? Because I didn't really get it. I can tell you what I know, and I probably do, I, I'm oh. sure that I don't know the whole story. Okay. Um, so, um, so TAC 310, 311, and 312 were created as offloading talk groups from worldwide in North America, and they were primar- primarily used for um, English-speaking USA and Canada. Mm-hmm. And they were created by uh, one of the Seabridge groups uh, that was then called uh, DCI Turbo. Okay. And, um, and they're somehow together with the DMRX guys, or may- maybe, they, maybe the DMRX guys have changed. I don't, I don't know how that all went together, but uh, there's a TAC 313 through 319 that's, that's hosted uh, by DMRX these days. But if you go to TAC 310, 311, and 312, they're still hosted on DCI uh, server, DCI URLs and DCI servers. Anyway... Um, so when Brandmeister came on the scene, um, they created their own. They do a lot of duplicating of talk groups, mm-hmm. um, and the TAC talk groups were some of those that they duplicated that were already in existence elsewhere. Well, they got together real quick with the DCI Turbo guys and um, interconnected TAC 310, 311, and 312 between Brandmeister and DCI Turbo and all the other C-bridges out there and all the other networks out there that might carry those talk groups. And they were interconnected for a long, long time. But the TAC talk groups were always meant to be a, a non-static talk group. In other words, uh, they they would on on all repeaters, you could kerchunk the repeater, and yeah. activate the talk group, and the talk group would stay active for ten or fifteen minutes, depending on how it was programmed. And then once it went quiet for ten or fifteen, and every time if you're in a conversation, every time you rekey the repeater, it resets the timer. Okay. Um, but after you stop the conversation and the and the talk group goes quiet on that repeater, after ten or fifteen minutes, it would time out and it would go quiet again, and it, it would be basically dormant. What's called a dynamic talk group. Mm-hmm. Um, well, when Brandmeister came around, they started making, they started allowing hotspot users to put TAC 310, 311, and 312 as a static talk group on their hotspots. I don't think they did it on their repeaters, but they did do it on the hotspots. Okay. So I don't know what caused this. I just know that I saw an announcement one day come around from Brandmeister that they were eliminating the ability to put the TAC 310, 311, and 312 talk groups as static on on people's hotspots so people can go into their brandmeister dashboard and they they don't they don't no longer have the ability to set tac 310 as static on a hotspot they can still set it as dynamic or chunk it and use it but they can't and i think they disconnected it for a short while mm-hmm. uh completely but as far as i know they did reconnect it i i believe i don't use a lot of brandmeister we don't use brandmeister here in texas so i i, I get on there sometimes oh interesting. but i don't but um, but we don't. What we've do had you, a net- What do you use in Texas? We have a we have a SeaBridge network in Texas called Lone Star, that has actually been in existence for about five years longer than five years before Brandmeister ever came online. Okay. Uh, so we were using DMR in Texas since 2010. Okay. Um, and Brandmeister came along uh, online in 2015, and um, so uh, all our 80, 90, 110, however many it is repeaters, the number kind of changes in Texas, um, are all on the sea or 90% of them are on the sea bridge network. There's a few brand master repeaters here and there, but, um, most of your Texas talk groups are hosted on, on the sea bridge network. So, um, so people, people got upset about that because they couldn't, because they were using TAC 310 as a rag chew talk group, right? Which is okay. My understanding but they would they would turn on their hotspot in the morning and they would just monitor it all day. And then when someone keyed up and talked to them, they would pick up and they'd start talking. So it was being like it was it wasn't being like an offload talk group. It was it was more like a, hey everybody listen for a rag chew talk group type thing. And that's that's not what it was originally intended for. So right. the Brandmeister guys decided to revert back to the original intent because they are guests on those talk groups that were originally created by the DCI Turbo folks, and it it 
threw a wrench into everything and upset people. Like oh. every time, every time you look this way instead of that way in amateur radio, someone gets upset. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> well, you're right. So I but, just uh, saw we got W five KUB in the house. So yeah, big, big yeah, shout oh. out to W five KUB. Uh, Jason and I have both been on Tom's Tuesday night radio show many times. Um, mm-hmm. He asks, does Brandmeister get you connected to any DMR or is it limited? By the way, it's uh, W5KUB.com for his Tuesday show. Make sure you go check that out. So what what's the deal there, Jason? So uh, does it does it get you connected to any DMR or is it limited? I'm guessing he means talk groups. Is that probably well, accurate? That's, that's the question. I mean, it depends on um... – yeah, it depends on what uh, depends on what he's what he's talking about. Um, no, it's limited. Um, most uh, see the the thing that the thing that's different about DMR from Fusion and D Star from wire I should I should say from Wires X and D Star mm-hmm. um, is that there's only one Wires X network and there's only one D Star network. So if mm-hmm. you connect to Reflector to Charlie on D Star, you're going to be to Charlie everywhere. If you connect to Wires X room three one six zero five or whatever the number is. It's going to be the same everywhere. Well, on, right. on DMR, you've got different networks. So you've got diff- basically you've got different servers on the Internet that you can point your repeater and or hotspot to. And TGIF is one. TGIF is a fairly, network, a fairly new network on DMR. So you can connect to the TGIF network, and they've got a list of talk groups they can go to. But those talk groups aren't necessarily connected to Brandmeister talk groups. So you point your repeater or your hotspot to Brandmeister, and they've got a list of talk groups you can connect to. Um, same thing with the Seabridge uh, system is, is that, um, you know, they and, and a lot of these talk groups are interconnected. I don't think TGIF, I think there's some political stuff between TGIF and Brandmeister where they don't have much to connected. But there's a lot of Brandmeister talk groups on the Seabridge and vice versa like that. So right. the, you just got to You got to know where your repeaters are connected. If you ever go into the Pi Star and look at the drop down menu for all the different connections you can make to dmr so you can yeah 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 there's so and many that's different what they, things that's what they are a lot of those are on a different network okay uh, not just a different server but a different network so oh we got ham radio dx sent a super DX. chat thanks uh mm-hmm. for this guys great for those starting here in australia our foundation license has just been given access to use digital modes i didn't realize that was a thing people didn't have wow no, i didn't know that so here here's a question it's kind of a good beginner question which mm-hmm. mode should you pick? What's the Ham Radio 2.0 recommendation on which mode you should pick if you if you wanted to get started? I get that question a lot too. I, I tell bet. people to pick yeah. I tell people to pick the mode that's around them. Mm-hmm. Pick the mode uh depending on I live in Dallas Fort Worth, there's at least one if not six of every kind of repeater out there that is known to man. Okay. I've got six 6 meter FN repeaters. There's a 10 meter FN repeater about 20 miles that way. Um, I've got 900 megahertz repeaters. I've got ATV repeaters. I've got 1.2 gigahertz. I've got Fusion, D-Star, DMR. There's a co- there's three P25 repeaters on Hamilton Radio near me. Really? We don't have NXDN. That's one of the things we don't have is NXDN. Wow. Um, but I've got I've got basically my pick of everything out here. So, but not everybody can say that, especially if you're out away from the Metroplex, which is where I would like to be. So, um, pick whatever is near you. If if you're wanting to talk locally, if you're wanting to talk to people in other areas, if you if you want to talk to your buddy in another state, then what is your buddy in another state using? If he's using D Star, get D Star. If he's using All Star Analog, mm-hmm. get an analog radio and set up an All Star node. Got so it. yeah, I mean, unless you just want, there there is no better mode. People ask me a lot of times too, which one's going to win? It's a Betamax versus VHS. Oh, look, great. So that was a question I was going to ask. So yeah, go for it. That, yeah, what? That's not a that that's not a valid comparison. Um, Nothing is going to win because nothing has won because JT65 didn't kill PSK31. PSK31 didn't kill Riddy, and FT8 hasn't killed any of them. It killed everybody. F- everybody tells me FT8 killed everything, though. There's still Riddy contests out there. People that... may not be using JT65 and PSK31 as much because uh-huh. of FT8 now. Right. But you can still you can still get on uh, Ham Radio Deluxe or FL Digi or whatever and communicate over those modes. No, right. they haven't turned them off. So, um, so yeah, I mean, F- FT8 is the new hot, ooh, shiny, right? But, what well, <laughs> FT4, actually. But um, Oh, I don't know. I, I did FT4 for a little while. It's, I've never tried FT4. It, it's fun. It's just like, it's just FT8, but faster, right? 
Right. To yeah. Me. Yeah. That was that. that was, yeah. I heard Joe Taylor talk at Hamvention last year at the Flex Radio Banquet, and he was he was explaining it, and it sounded like it was FT8, but faster. Um, but I've I've never used it, so um, yeah. It's. It, I mean, you still got you still got CQ R- Worldwide Riddy contests. You've mm-hmm. still got AWRL North American QSO for Riddy, and Riddy's been around longer than any other digital mode on on HF. Um, well, except C- those who call CW digital mode, um, which it is. Uh-oh. And, uh oh! Um, well, I'm I'm lagging apparently. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I noticed uh, you were lagging. Just well, real quick, we did the giveaway. I just wanted to announce uh, who the giveaway winner is. Let's let's do that really quick, and then I'll I'll try and fix this. So, the giveaway winner is Fusion K8 DCC E <laughs> Extra. <laughs> so, congratulations, Fusion K8 DCC. And I will uh, close Discord really quick because that's probably what's causing it. It should calm back down in a second. We should be good to go. Let me go back to that. I think we should be back on, back up and running. So, Looks better here. Oh, yeah. So everybody's on Twitch saying it's not on Twitch. Twitch looks fine. Uh, that is a thing. That is a thing that happens. Twitch is always, for some reason, faster, has no issues. That's why we simulcast to Twitch. And literally, as as this started happening, people jumped off the YouTube stream, and I saw Twitch just jump right up. So everybody, <laughs> literally, everybody knows I'm also on Twitch when, when it fails, and Twitch is always rock solid. So, sorry, where were you at? Because where what were we talking about? I, I'm, I'm sorry I, I cut into that there. Oh, I was just talking about uh, the, uh, that I've never talked to FT4, on FT4. Oh, never right. FT4. Okay. So, so yeah. the answer, I think the answer though to the uh, to the newbie question is which mode should you get involved with or started with? It's what your friends are using that mm-hmm. are active. Hopefully, they're not just buying the new right. shiny like you said. They actually use it. And what's available in your area? Do you have a, a particular way you like to find repeaters in your area? I use the R Finder app. There, oh, all right. Somebody yeah. mentioned R Finder earlier, so. Bob, That's probably going to come up in a question. He was in your chat earlier. He's the owner of our finder. Oh, I is said, that what he's doing? Yeah. I, I captured I his question. Right. I didn't realize who that was. Bob, yeah. look at that. The, the, I sent the him the link. Quiet I sent plug. him the link right as we were starting. I said, hey, check this out. <laughs> All right, Bob, I'll check out our finder and, and yeah, check out that app. Is it, uh, is it an Android app or what kind of app is it? It's Android and iPhone both. It's oh, both. cool. All yeah. right, well, check out our finder. I'll check it out and I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll come back to you. But you, you generally recommend that? Yeah, I like it better. Um, I, I use Repeater Book for a while. Repeater Book works fine too. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as DMR information goes, R Finder has much better information for DMR repeaters than Repeater Book does. R Finder also gives you a lot more. Set, like R Finder has a, has a grid square locator. Right. And it uses the GPS. So you open up R Finder, you're like, oh, that's where I'm currently at right now. So it'll tell you your grid square location and, and uh, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, it, it's, got, it's got some other cool stuff in it like that. But. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's the one that I tend tend to use most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me say something. Go let for me it. say something real quick about. Um, you said something a minute ago about uh, which one to use. Let me also say something. I was I, I I was thinking about this stream the other day, and this was like a week ago, and I don't know why I, I was I, I think I was driving down the road and I was like I came to an epiphany, which doesn't happen to me very often at all, and um, and I thought. You know, DMR has been DMR is my favorite mode, and I don't okay. I don't apologize for that. I just I like DMR better. That doesn't mean I think D Star Fusion sucks. It just means I prefer DMR better. Sure. Uh, to, to the other ones. Um, think about it this way: DMR is. I don't know if this is still true. About a year ago, DMR was the fastest growing digital mode in amateur radio. It's still got there's there's about a hundred and forty five ish thousand. Mm-hmm. subscribers registered on radio radio id.net right now uh, worldwide and um and they get about 50 or 60 new ones every day and and due to some legal restrictions a, a while back they took out the the europe has their own site like that now right because we don't have any european stuff on there so basically every continent on the on earth except for europe is in radio id and about you know and they get about 50 or 60 new people subscribing every new registering for new id every day does that include antarctica yeah yeah, I believe so. I believe it's everybody except Europe. Well, damn. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, Ethan in the chat says yep. it's still the fast growing and largest. I think it is too. I just haven't looked at those numbers in a while. So think about it this way. Here's my point. DMR has never had the backing of what of what I like to call the big four. Or oh, you yeah. could say the 
and say the big three if you want to. Kenwood, Icom, and Yezu. Mm -hmm. It's never had the backing of either of those. Uh, Icom wants nothing to do with it. Yezu decided to make their own mode that was compatible with nothing else. And Kenwood actually makes DMR radios and has for a long time. Uh, they make their, their NX series radios, but they're all on the commercial side, and they have commercial price tags on them, and most of them are monoband. And they're really great radios if you don't mind paying for them. These, some of these Motorola guys use the Kenwood NX series radios. I, they're, they're rock solid, mm -hmm. but they're not an amateur radio, okay? So think about the growth of DMR and how much it's exploded in the amateur radio community, and it's never had the backing of Kenwood, Icom, and Yezu. That's a good point. And I thought, you know, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that it's, it's got cool. a it's grassroots thinking. kind of feel to it, right? Right, exactly. It's got one of those, yeah. you know, like we did we did this kind of just pushing for it. And that's not to say that wasn't uphill all the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because it is, okay. all, it is more complicated to configure a DMR radio. It really is. I, I think that – but it it also at the same time, is it's it, there's an interoperability between radios, I guess you could say. You're not locked yes. to a particular brand. And Correct. I, I think that – as much as as much as you know, amateur radio is a funny place. I think Jason would agree. People get really staunchly brand loyal, and to the to their mm -hmm. detriment, like they they will become like these brand advocates, and then not venture out of that brand. It's like they pick their cig. I, I always say it's like they pick their cigarette, and they'll never s stray right. from that cigarette brand. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then DMR shows up, and it's these quirky Chinese radios, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I gotta try that. And it's mm -hmm. very little hand holding in, in DMR, other than like you know the videos you produce, that kind of gets you through it. it. It's not an easy slog, and and that's almost to its credit, I think, that mm -hmm. you're in this situation where you have this you know no brand support it. It's these weird Chinese radios, and yet oh, and it's commercial, so it's got these clunky software titles. At least when it started out, really clunky to program. It's yes. gotten better. I think the Bridgecom stuff, for example, is like way better. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. Now I will yeah. ask you just as a to play devil's advocate with you a bit because I think mm -hmm. this is a good question before we go to uh, phone calls. Mm -hmm. Do you think the popularity of digital modes? And the appearance that they are internet enabled, meaning that's how they get that long distance communication thing, is mm -hmm. because people aren't getting on HF. Oh, that's a good question. Um, maybe. Like, maybe, do you think maybe because the sun cycle's so low, we're in the that's... bottom of the sun cycle? I've yep. I've heard people allude to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. HF is not nearly as dead as what everyone says it is. I agree. Okay. Well, I think so we all I put agree. Up, I, put up, I put up a video a while back, which it was a picture of me holding my Maestro like that. Yeah, I know. At it angrily. <laughs> yeah. It said, HF is dead. Yeah. And I got people coming in, and then, I, and, then, and then I get on the video, and I show that HF is, in fact, not dead. But then right. I get people coming on the video saying, have you not tried it? HF isn't dead. What are you talking? I'm like – you yes, read the you title. didn't get it. You yeah. didn't watch the video. <laughs> you didn't get it. So, you, didn't you didn't get watch it. the video. So yeah. HF is not – yes, we are at the bottom of a sun cycle. It's not yeah. 1997 anymore. Agreed. Right. Is it dead? No, it's not. Pick up your freaking HF radio and key up sometime and see who comes back to you. I, there's, there's like half a dozen 40-meter nets yeah. that I listen to it, and sometimes check to every morning. It, it's, it's crazy uh, to me, I, not to derail this from digital, but we did yeah. the California QSO party, yeah. and I made a QSO over single sideband to Maine, who I I think is a state that I've never made a, a single sideband QSO with. It's literally like the farthest state away from me, and right. it was just because it was a QSO party. Could that happen all the time? Absolutely, but it doesn't yeah. because people don't get out there. The the right. you know it, Every time there's an event, people come out, mm -hmm. but it's I think it's because it's not – it's more haphazard and, and random that people are yes. like, well, I'm just, I'd rather not play at all. I want yeah. consistency. I don't like, I fear change. I fear it. Yeah. I think that's what yeah. it is. So I just, yeah. So yeah, people may be getting on digital modes more because it's harder to make contacts on HF. It's not impossible. It's harder right. to, because there's not as much activity. It's not dead, but there's not as much activity. So yeah, that may be a factor, but at the same time, it's not, and if you want to make, and I love D, I, I think Tom, Tom, W5KUB Tom asked this question on one of his streams one night a couple months ago. And I said, you know what, Tom? I said, I just want to call a spade a spade. If you want to talk on DMR and talk overseas, go for it. But it's not a DX contact. Mm -hmm. 
talking over the internet is not a DX contact. It's not the same thing as as putting and a it's wire treated in that a tree. Way. It's treated yeah. that way too. You yeah. can't really claim a QSO that you did over internet connected repeaters, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Or so, repeaters in general. No. No. Even All Star. You can right. talk to overseas on All Star all day long. Mm-hmm. Um. So or Echo Link. You can you can open the Echo Link app on your phone and talk to another country right now. I did. I talked to um, Callum. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> the DX so, commander. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, that may be a factor, yes. Um, but even if we were at the top of a sun cycle right now, sunspot cycle right now, I, I think that these digital modes would still be taking off because it's, yeah. it's, um, it's a, it's a new toy that mm-hmm. is good for amateur radio and gets amateur radio more into the IT world. And I think it's a good growth potential for for the hobby in general. I, I would I would say though that if we're ever in a situation where people are like hearing themselves on their radio um, because the sun cycle is so good, then <laughs> there's going to be an insane amount of people back on HF. But yes. I, you know, there's people have so much conjecture on that and and these yeah. crazy theories that we'll never get a sun cycle as good as we had and in blah blah blah. I get it, but we are literally mm-hmm. in the dregs of of sun cycle. So, right, you know, Jason, would you mind taking some calls? No, no, go for it, man. All right. So I got a caller here. I got John KD nine NVF. How you doing, John? Thanks for calling back. Hey, or I'm calling doing in again. Good. So, uh, so uh, I was wondering, like, I've heard that, like. Well, it was on the test that uh, a dipole radiates the most broadside to the antenna. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Uh, broadside so, to the antenna. Yes, the 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 radiation pattern is from the. It's like perpendicular to the length of the leg. So if the legs are like this, the if you rotated it. The radiation pattern is a donut that expands. That is what a dipole radiation pattern looks like. So uh, do you think you could put a picture of that up on stream so people can, you know, take a look at it? When I'm doing a dipole video, absolutely. I I mean, I, I, I actually, if you go to my antenna terms uh, video, I did a live stream on antenna terms. I, I brought my, I, I got an iPad and I and I drew all the pictures of all this weird, crazy stuff. And no, I didn't lose Skype. He's on Skype. He's talking to us on Skype. He's just talking over a phone. That's why it looks like an S. So sorry about that. But um, that's that's why uh, you can go look at that video and it'll it'll show a bit about dipoles there. So hopefully that answers the question a bit. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but would that make it like effectively a bi-directional antenna and not a unidirectional, or not uni, uh, an omnidirectional antenna? If it's a horizontally mounted dipole, it's going to be bi-directional. But even though it's bi-directional and you have nulls on the tips, the propagation pattern is still going to give you some coverage. And then once you get a bounce, a hop, all bets are off. Once you hit the hop and however the propagation's going, it's going to send your RF all over the place anyway. So the directionality is less important because remember a dipole on its own is not imparting any gain. That would require something like a Yagi in which you're focusing more of that RF. So I, I know people have like rotatable dipoles, you know, to get some kind of directionality out of them. Dipoles have directionality, but they're not a lot of directionality and they have no gain. Does that make sense? Well, I don't, yeah. So, if it doesn't have gain, that that means that if you if you put fifty watts on the input, you're going to get fifty watts at the antenna. Mm, not necessarily, because whatever line loss you have, and that that's not necessarily a factor of gain. Uh, the factor of gain is focusing the RF. So, if the dipole that is connected to the Yagi is putting out some level of RF the reflector behind it and the directors in front of it are preventing that dipole donut pattern that I was talking about and pushing it all forward into what's called a forward lobe. So that's where your gain comes from. So it's trying to push um, this uh, this signal forward. But I'm going to... 
you're the only caller right now. So if anybody, somebody said this is a little bit off topic, which it is, but the only way you can get it back on topic is by calling in. So if you're not <laughs> the solution to the problem, you are the problem. <laughs> but John, I appreciate the question. Did you have something else you wanted to ask? Maybe digital radio related? I was wondering how hard it would be to make a digital protocol. Oh. Mainly like... Oh. Mainly like FSK based. A frequency shift keying digital protocol. How how about it, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> you want to develop one of those for us? Uh, I don't I don't know about uh, FSK based, but there are there's at least one, if not two or three groups out there right now doing exactly that. Uh huh. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see a new digital voice mode at some point in the future. It's probably not gonna be next month, but at some point in the future yeah we'll we'll do that okay all right well hopefully that is a little bit more uh information there all right john i've got another well, caller here oh go ahead well i wasn't really thinking of like voice mode but like something similar to like ready something like that right oh yeah that i mean okay first of all uh ft8 was developed by a physicist so you have to appreciate <laughs> yeah. the complexity there um although js8 call i i know i don't know the person personally but i followed him on instagram and he used a lot of the base of ft8 when it was called ft8 call it's now js8 call uh, he used a lot of ft8 when he developed it so as a developer software developer you can probably you could probably make something there. John, I got to let you go because we got a ton of callers here. So thanks for calling in, okay? Completely understandable. See you Th later. Thank you, John. I'll talk to you later. Hopefully you join the Discord later for the after chat. Okay, we got a lot of new callers here. So let's uh, – first new caller, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. What's your name and call sign? Uh, my name is Chris uh, Garza, and I'm – sitting for my test tomorrow um so i've been just studying for the last few weeks trying to get ready okay awesome so uh that's cool appreciate that so do you have a question or anything you want to ask yeah, yeah i do specifically about dmr you mm -hmm. guys were talking about plug codes is that something you use on your computer that automatically uploads to your ht in order to like populate your memory so you have um uh, you know, repeaters and that kind of thing and talk groups on the handy. Take it, Jason. Uh, yeah, it's a code plug. And yes, um, it's a, yes, you use, you put together a code plug on a computer program on your computer and then you plug your radio into your computer with a USB cable that usually is okay. supplied, supplied with the radio when you buy the radio. And then you use the computer program that you've written the code plug in to uh, write or read information to and from the radio. Okay. So I just recently purchased a uh, Yaesu FT3D and it doesn't have any programming software. So it sounds like I'm stuck uh, using something different than a code plug. Well, I, yeah, Josh, you probably know that more than I do, but as far as I know, FT3D does have programming software. You just have to buy it separately, but, but go ahead. Yeah, so there there is Yesu programming software, and it is uh, so it's you have to pay for it if you want to connect the radio directly to it. Although it seems to work really well if you program a CF card, you know, the compact flash card that goes in the radio, that works and works really well. I will tell you though, from using that radio, I program it manually. I manually program that. The FT2DR and the FT3DR, I program totally manually. It's very easy to program. The Yesu System Fusion slash Wires X does not require the same level of talk groups and receive groups and blah, blah, blah groups that you, or zones that you would normally encounter in DMR. It's very much lower impact, I guess, getting up and running. Isn't it? Wouldn't you agree, Jason? What would you say? Yeah, um, so what you have to realize is that um, the code plug... In, uh, okay, so changing talk groups on a repeater is done in your radio mm -hmm. on DMR. Changing wires X rooms in Fusion is done on the repeater in, uh, in Fusion. 
So that's one way. Yes, unless but the repeater. Yeah. If we're it, so wires X, that's true. But if you're talking just yes. Yesu uh, system fusion re- repeater, well, not necessarily only... wires X. Right. That's okay, just the, so... that's just the frequency you're on, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So there's only one talk group or room then. So right. I mean, you you have the repeater; it's standalone. There is no talk group separation that way. Unless so. you're using a hotspot, and then you can change reflectors willy nilly whenever you want to. Well, if you're using a hotspot, then you're on wires X. So if you're talking about a standalone repeater, fusion repeater using digital, then yes. But if you're if you're if you're on a hotspot, then you're either in a FCS or wires X room. What is so, F- yeah. FCS? FC. That's- F some kind of something reflector that that's one. Yesu system fusion, not yes. YSF FC FCS. Yeah, like if you connect to Bob's room, it's FCS zero zero three. That is a wires X room. Correct. But a reflector that you connect to via your hotspot is like switching talk groups. So there are there are like when you when you put it into Yesu system fusion mode, the drop down you can just select whatever reflector you want. Yes. So if you, and you you'd have to re up the 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 hotspot, but that's how you'd switch. The radio still is just dumb talking to the the frequency right. that you're on. That's so yeah. Okay, right. we're saying the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right, Chris. Okay. That's great. I appreciate I appreciate the uh, the time and I appreciate. Um, your videos because it's helped me and kind of inspired me to get my license. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for what you do. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. And good luck. Take that test and come back and tell us you you rocked it. Join the Facebook. Uh, subscribe to Jason here, Ham Radio 2.0, and, and get on the Discord, too. Get on Jason's Discord, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right, take it easy. All right, we got a couple more here. Hey, a new brand new caller. Go ahead. Uh, what's your name? Yeah, this is uh, Tony, K- uh, KM4HSB. Uh, HSB? Uh, Hotel Sierra Delta. Delta. Okay, now I got it as a Bravo. Okay, Tony, what's up? Uh, well, just uh, first of all, I'll start with uh, wanting to thank you and Jason both there. Uh, I've been a, a, a subscriber of his for a while. Ran across you here just a, just a little bit ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. Um uh, Wait, so you subscribed to Jason um, first? Uh, I found him first. Ah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I like Come it. Go now. for it. Um, but um, but uh, I want to say I'm new. To, I've, I've got my first DMR radio about a year ago. Uh, I really liked it. I had a Yace, uh, the Yacy Fusion prior to that. Still mm-hmm. have that, but kind of leaning more towards D- DMR these days. Good. But uh, I, I guess the um, I've got like I heard heard Jason a little a little earlier but the various hot spots and I, and I've got a couple of five stars and all star and a couple other things, but uh, I haven't gone into the linking of or whatever you call it from DMR to to fusion or vice versa. Um, I just kind of wondered if you had had any good, bad, or otherwise experience on that. So the only person I know that does that is is Ethan, one of the admins on the HRCC. But Jason, have you had involvement in that cross-linking digital modes? Um, not directly, but yes, um, we have a we have a dig, uh, we have a Fusion Wires X um, room called Texas Nexus that a lot of uh, I say a lot, a few repeat. There's like three or four, maybe five repeaters in North Texas and up and down. Uh, I-35 down to Austin, San Antonio that uh, that are fusion repeaters that run in digital only mode, and they're connected into a room called uh, Fusion uh, called a wi- uh, Wires X room is what I'm trying to say called the Texas Nexus. Inside of the Texas Nexus, they have an open spot running that uh, does translation between uh, the 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 Wires X room and a DMR and a Brandmeister DMR talk group. So mm-hmm. you can get into a you can get into to a to the room through Brandmeister DMR or through Texas Nexus or through a hotspot running either one because uh, they're using that hotspot translation to connect the two together. So, uh, yeah, it works well. I've I've used my Fusion radio to talk through a hotspot into a DMR talk group, and I've used my DMR radio to talk through a hotspot into a Fusion Wires X room before. So, um, yes, it, 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 uh, it works pretty well, actually. Uh, before we get off this topic, I, I want to ask this question really quickly. So HF D star or fusion on 10 meters. Have you used either digital mode on HF? 
Me no. I yeah, not. I'm I'm kind of curious about that because there's two rate uh, the nine the Yaesu nine nine one does System right. Fusion and the Icom seventy one hundred does D Star. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's that's pretty interesting. Oh yeah, uh, TZ five N is mm -hmm. one of the ones asking that. So that's interesting. And all right, why mm -hmm. not? Game on. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's some. I know some guys who've done that. They say it sounds phenomenal, but I've never I've never messed with any of that. I don't have any of those radios, so I've never messed with any of that myself. Gotcha, Tony. How, uh, does that answer your question? Do you need anything else? Well, yeah. No, no. It's cool. I, I appreciate you taking uh, taking the call, and uh, feel free to move on. Thanks. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. A couple more here. Hey, new caller. What's your name? Hey, Josh. Hey, Jason. It's uh, Al. Kilo 5 Fox Quebec. Kilo 5 Fox Quebec. All right. Also, also What's known up? As whiteboard. Uh, Wait, what did you so say? Also known as what? Guys, the whiteboard. The white uh, what? I want to thank whiteboard in the chat. Oh, oh okay. Right oh, on. Right oh. on. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to thank both you guys uh, and, and not only you two, but everybody else that's doing these kinds of videos and uh, streams on YouTube these days, uh, you're doing uh, an immeasurable good to the community to allow young hams to get involved and learn. Uh, when I got into this, it was really uh, kind of back, backed into it, um, got, got an HT placed in my hand and realized I needed a ticket to re be able to use it legally. So mm -hmm. I went off and uh, found some online study and, um, uh, practice tests and passed my second general in one lick, missed extra by two questions, and came back and, and knocked it out. But uh, didn't have any of these kinds of resources. So you're you're all are doing amazing things, uh, and these things were literally not there uh, as much as five years ago. So uh, thank you both. So my question: um, If you're going to get involved in D Star, you're going to have to buy a radio. So you're going to have to figure that out, and I'll leave that for. Josh, you've had other videos on what's the best radio. And in my particular area, there's not really coverage in my immediate area for uh, a repeater. So I know I'm going to have to uh, set up with uh, a hotspot. So no problems. Those questions are answered. Great. Now the question is, how do you sort out, uh, and is there a good starting place that gives you a step-by-step -step march through uh which talk groups, which, you know, what do I do first? And, and I think, Jason, you, you took a pass at this er, earlier in the chat, but um, it set up, where do you find a comprehensive list of talk groups? Uh, where do you find comprehensive lists of any of these things? Uh, is there such a thing as comprehensive lists? And if there's not, then just say so and use the Googles and, and off we go. Hmm. Okay, go for you it. You want me to take? You want me to take that? I mean, I got um, thoughts, but go ahead. All right. So, um, what what state are you in? Pennsylvania, and I already checked your um, your site, and there's not an index. There's a placeholder for PA, but not a yeah. not a listing. Okay, I I know who to reach out to for that. So PA PA DMR is a thing. Um, PA. P A D M. If you Google P A D M R, that's they have their own website. Um, are you familiar with that? I'm looking right now. Okay, so P A D M R. So one of the good things about Brandmeister um, huh. is that pretty first much. Was, Padme, first thing I got was Padme Amidala out of Star Wars. Gotta love that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so but one I of the good things about Brandmeister is that they have the same talk groups on basically every repeater usually what they will do is they will put one time slot on a local only where it's just a repeater only talk group and then they'll put the other time slot connected into the brandmeister master server and you'll be able to key up any brandmeister talk group you want to from there mm -hmm. um with a c-bridged repeater it's a little bit more customizable so it's it's more of a pick and choose situation depending on what the repeater owner and trustee wants so it depends on what kind of repeaters are near you. PADMR, I'm pretty sure, are mostly C-bridged repeaters. But last time I – it's been a while since I've looked out there for Pennsylvania, but the last time I knew 
um, they had a pretty good website with what's listed where. Uh, if nothing else, find a repeater near you and email the trustee. I found that most of the time these DMR repeater trustees will be pretty responsive. I mean, they don't put up a repeater and ask that no one uses it usually. So that so if they have a repeater in the sure. air that's online and working and, and you ask them about it, generally, if they have their QRZ information up to date, which which is give or take, okay? Update your QRZ information, yeah. people. Please. Um, but yeah, if they have their QRZ yeah. information up to date, usually they're pretty responsive and willing to help somebody get on their repeater. Yeah, Great. my issue is I live in a in a... It's basically it's a VHF UHF hole, and there are repeaters around, but I can't range them from right in my QTH, uh, or at least not without a great deal of difficulty. So, the hot spot route is where I'm going for is what I'm going to have to go with, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. And you know that's that's it's nice that we have options. I mean, people right. are going to look down on you, and I think that's true. Okay, so newsflash: ham radio has a lot of people that are going to look down on you just for breathing. Um, being on the same frequency as them um but if if it gets you out there and it gets you using the radio even if it's through a rf receiving transmitting device that then connects to the internet hey it gets you started it gets you going and then maybe with situations changing you learn a little bit more in fact you're going to learn a lot by the way because you're going to have to deal with figuring out how to program the thing and operate with the thing so you know make there's no problem with that there's there's nothing to feel bad about no all right, that's it. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for calling in. All right, last call. 7-3 and out here. <laughs> Appreciate it. K5FQ out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, last call. Hey, new call. What's your name? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Carl, and the call is W8KFW. KFW. All right, thanks for calling in. What's your question? <laughs> Well, it's not really a question. I just want to let everybody else out there that is saying that uh, HF is dead. Um, this, af this afternoon, I was going all over Europe with the FTA, and I would imagine the CW is the same. Sure. So uh, hang in there with the HF and <laughs> go out there, get on the radio, and have fun. I, I think that is a, a true point. I think you and I and Jason <clears throat> all agree. You agree, right, Jason? Oh yeah, get out oh, there, yeah. man. I, I, get out I, there, I make them agree. calls. That's that. That's it. It's every literally. I'll say it again. Every time there's an event, every time we have a contest, all of a sudden signals everywhere. How 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 can it be? Well, it's because people are out there. Why are they not out there? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I I, I got to be honest. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the truth. So if you if you look back to the '90s, right? What was on television? Not a lot of great stuff. What's on television now? Literally anything you want. You got iPad, you have yeah. Netflix, you have the internet, you got Hulu. Our world is saturated with things that can take us away from doing radio. It, it is literally an omnipresent. Anytime you put some object down, there's literally another object that you can occupy your time with. <laughs> Before, we, we took pride in building these things and then operating them on the air, and it, it took days, weeks in some cases. Now it's like, I'm bored. What can I do? I, I'll just open up this tablet and have fun with it. So the reality yeah. is is we have competition for our time. And with the sun cycle being low, it's just more more trouble to get people to be consistently on the air calling and working on their station and, and particularly yeah. trying to work on suppressing RFI. So, Right, right. Yeah, no, and, and don't get me All wrong. Right, I don't have well. any problem with people watching TV or Netflix or anything like that. That's fine. I'm just saying that that's just one more pull for our time. That's all. Right, right. <laughs> Somebody okay. said they... I'll uh, let you guys continue on. Thank well, you. thank you for calling. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. sure, somebody said sure, somebody no said in the chat that uh, YouTube took him away from ham radio. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing it right now. Yeah, we're doing, we're it. doing it right now. So, Jason, uh, any thoughts on the beer you got there? The sticky mm. buns, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's like a, um, uh, yeah, like a cinnamon roll. Mm -hmm. So, well, I do. Uh, wait. Okay, I got one. Okay, we'll we'll. What time is it? You got time for one more call? 
We're running yeah, a little I, long. I'm good. I'm fine. Okay, we're we're taking one more call. Here we go. Caller, go ahead. Hello, this is Domino's Pizza. We're outside your door with 22 pizzas. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, how's it going? How you doing, Josh? Good, good. This is Justin, right? Yeah, of course. WD8 EHD. How are you tonight? Uh, good. What's up? I uh, was... Oh, nothing much. Uh, I just got back from Ham Radio Club. Okay. Got my new, you saw my new QRP rig. And it is ready to go on the air. So next nice day, I will be on the air with it. Um, right on. Heard, overheard the conversation there. I just kind of tuned in. Uh, you were talking about um, all the distractions why people uh, uh, not necessarily on the air all the time. Um, I, I could really agree with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of things to... Uh, Keep keep our minds occupied. <laughs> right, I think so. Um, but I mean, I I don't always get on the two meet, two meter rig, or that's that's what my license class privilege is for. You know. Do um, you before have I, a before I had yeah, my uh, tech? Yeah, that's, that's the license I have. I was going to ask so, you: Do you um, have a digital yeah, radio I, question? Um. More just a comment on uh, what you were just kind of talking about there. Oh, gotcha. Um, and I appreciate you know, so. that. Yeah. Um, I, I'll have to rewatch uh, everything later there. Um, um, I, I guess I kind of come up with one, I guess. Um, sure, if you have it. Otherwise, you know, it's okay because um, we're going to wrap up here in a little bit anyway. I'll, you know, you're just, you're just cutting into uh, Discord after chat time. Uh-huh. <laughs> um. Um, I, I guess, uh, would you consider Echolink digital, first of all? Um, I, I, I guess. I mean, digitized, in, I'll would... take that. I mean, digitized in the sense that it's digital data okay. over the IP stack between multiple locations of, okay. you know, networking equipment. Absolutely. But is it, uh, digital from the point that your voice goes into the app? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is it? Yeah. No. 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 It's just it's just an audio representation of your voice over IP. It's like VoIP. Yeah. Gotcha. Kind. Is it VoIP? I mean, is that the safest way to say it? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I I guess I could board, kind of borderline it. I guess um, you know, so, something I've been wanting to set up for a while is um, um, I, I guess I got this thing called All Star too. I've I've never really messed with it. Right. Um, All Star is the same kind of thing. I, it's I, it's linking kinda, analog repeaters yeah. together via the internet. Um, how do I put this? W- would you recommend purchasing an open spot too, or going with you know get, getting that all set up and configured, or going the route of um, you know Echolink All Star, finding a node um, you know that's out there, somebody's configured and build it and get that plugged in and. You know, if there is, if you would go the other route of Echolink All Star, what would you recommend for a, I, I guess a node? I, is there people out there who build them? You know, any, anybody reputable that I can just plug it in and have it ready to go? From all my experience, um, All Star is the way to go. That, all Star sounds way better yeah. than Echolink in all my experience, and all the repeaters that run All Star, it sounds really good. Uh, you do need the repeater owner to give you the key or whatever they have for that repeater. Most do. Mm-hmm. So when you're running the app, All Star is generally the way to go. And there, Carol is Carol is mm-hmm. my my prime example. Carol uh, from Texas hops on through uh, All Star onto our local Southern California repeater where she has a great time. Contact me privately if you want information on that uh, on that repeater. I don't want to get. Okay, sure. <laughs> Contact me privately <laughs> on Discord, guys. I think yeah, we I gotta will. we gotta wrap yeah. this up. We got some callers, but I'm I'm sorry. We gotta go to Discord. So we're gonna take this uh, to the after chat. I, Jason, you gonna right. go to the after chat? You got some time? Yeah, I got some time. All right, excellent. Yeah, let let's swing this over there because. We're going to be taking this, uh, we're going to be slow rolling these questions. We should take them fast and furious. So, guys, uh, Jason, hang on real quick. Here we go. Big thank you to the patrons. In fact, I got to pull this whole thing up now because it's way more complicated than it used to be. 
So Chris Siebert, uh, Chris Ebert, Carrie Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, Barbara Schrock, Will Ladd, Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, 86 DM Dennis, Wyoming Ham, Randall Hinsley, and I just got to not do that. Evan Hartman, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Corey Vuelta, Mr. Moe, David Mays, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Rob K8BCR, Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Steve Barker, Mark Fields, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadow, Stephen Hunt, Brian Nosowitz, Connor Carroll, Mike Marusin, Mike Hearley, Harald Carpenter, and the Brew Crew. I uh, I finished my brew. Jason, what do you think about your brew? Is it a it thumbs awesome. up? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't finished mine yet. I'm slow rolling it. All right. <laughs> so uh, Ian Webb, Sean Bales, Jason Barrett, and uh, Er, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. You sent me the pronunciation. I will pull it up. I promise I will do it on the next uh, video. I didn't pull it up, so I don't have it open. I super apologize. But that is a complicated name, and it was not what I expected when he sent. So, again, we'll get it right. Chad Newton, Rob Zer, and that's another Invalid one. Invalid option. I agree. I said that totally <laughs> wrong. John Molnar, Stephen Hunter, Justin Rao, and Stephen Carduz. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, you know what, Jason? Why don't you? You got something to say? Anything you want to head out, go out on? Yeah. Um, hey, guys. Uh, I, I'm always. Yeah, I have a Discord as well. We discuss DMR and other digital modes. And Josh has a. I'm has a member a channel, of his I'm, Discord. Of his Discord. Right. Yeah. And uh, and I'm a member of Josh's Discord. I'm I'm willing to to answer questions about. Most of my knowledge lies in DMR. I've seen some people ask some questions tonight that we didn't get to. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm, you know, hit me up. I'm good on QRZ. You can email me, hit me up in discord, uh, whatever. Happy to help anybody with any DMR questions you might have. Yeah. Jason is a great, a great piece of knowledge here for getting into DMR and not just DMR, but you know, you explore other digital modes as well. Sure. If you're, if you're not already following him, you got a good, uh, you got a good, what is it? Costa Rica again, you're going to. You're going yes. to be posting some videos for that. That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. We'll do, we're going to do our next uh, YouTubers uh, recording from That's there. That's right. Anything, and... anything interesting happening in November? <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. All right. So, yes, one of the people flying into L.A. to visit Josh on his hike is me. I will be there, and I'm yep. really excited about that. So yeah. We're... I've never done a, I've never done a, a mountaintop uh, expedition or a hike like that before, so I'm going to uh, Josh said he has a bad knee, which is cool with me because I'm not a very uh, good hiker. So we'll both go at a really slow pace. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll take our time. It's, yeah, it's totally. it's not really the going up that's my problem. It's the going down because it's like you're ah. extenuating the the drop yeah. like, every time. Okay. Um, but at the same time, we're we're not in any rush because we're taking yeah. we're going up on one day and coming back down the second day. So sure. we can take as much as time as we want going up, set up camp, chill, play radio, and then come back down. So Jason's coming out. Yeah. For the CUSO party, it's going to be awesome. Pacifico it's Mountain. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. 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 So, uh, November 9th and 10th, which will kind of coincide with the 73,000 uh, subscriber thing. So I'm very totally. excited. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Thank guys, you. make sure you you subscribe to Jason Ham Radio 2.0. The link is in the description, and Ethan has been posting it. So thank you for that. We're going to Discord right now. We're going to do the after chat and have a lot of fun. So I hope you join us there. All right, 73s, everybody, take it easy. <laughs>